problem of evil. The problem of evil is something that atheistic philosophers will throw up as an objection to the Bible and say, here is philosophical proof that the Bible has to be false. In a nutshell, it goes like this. Number one, God is all good. Number two, God is all powerful. But number three, evil exists. And therein basically is the formulation of the argument. The conclusions are as follow. Therefore, either one or two or both are false. Either God is good, but cannot remove evil and therefore is not all powerful, or God is all powerful, but doesn't want to remove evil, even though he could, so he isn't good, or he's just neither good nor powerful. And therefore, the God of the Bible cannot exist. You just got pwned, fools! So therein is what we call the problem of evil. But what is being assumed here? What are the unspoken assumptions that lead to this conclusion? The assumptions are as follows. Number one, if God is good, God's highest priority is goodness, meaning a lack of evil. Two, thus, if he is all-powerful, then there is no reason why evil would exist. Three, thus, if evil exists, then either God cannot do anything about it, or he doesn't care, meaning he is not good. These are false assumptions. God's highest priority is love, which requires the freedom to choose. By allowing choice, God allows for us to choose to love him, which results in goodness, or not to love him, which results in evil. Because God desires to love us and be loved by us, we have to have the ability to choose. Because we can choose, we can choose to rebel, which results in evil. If God desired a lack of evil over anything else, he would not have made beings which can choose, but he did. So it is reasonable to infer that, while he may hate evil, God considered it a worthwhile risk in order to bring about something greater, the chance to love. We take the same risk when we get married or have children. The problem of evil is solved by Jesus. Jesus solves the equation. On the cross, God used evil as a tool to bring about salvation. Genesis 50:20 says, As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. This, of course, is referring to Joseph talking to how his brother sold him into slavery, but this is a foreshadowing of what Jesus would do on the cross, that what they meant in putting him to death on the cross was evil against him, but God meant it for good that through Jesus' death on the cross, we could have eternal life, spiritually and then in the life to come. In Acts 2 it says, This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. So Jesus' death on the cross was evil. The most perfect and sinless man who ever lived was murdered in a horrible and brutal way. But it was according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, and he did it for us. As John 3.16 says, For God loved the whole world so much that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. The bigger problem for atheism is that the problem of evil is actually a problem for atheism. C.S. Lewis sums it up this way, My argument against God was that the universe seemed so cruel and unjust. But how had I got this idea of just and unjust? A man does not call a line crooked unless he has some idea of a straight line. What was I comparing this universe with when I called it unjust? So the problem of evil for atheists. One, atheism offers no explanation for evil, nor good, as it holds no basis for objective morality. Two, if there is no God, there is no objective moral standard by which to judge good from evil. But number three, evil exists. Number four, thus atheism must be false. Thus the existence of evil proves the existence of God. Far from being evidence for atheism, it's actually evidence against atheism. So what exactly is the problem of evil? What is it the atheists are offering up? Well, there's three reasons why anyone believes in anything. Intellectual, emotional, or volitional. The problem of evil is here. It is emotional. This is the true problem of pain. We feel evil should not exist, as it should not. God made a perfect world which was corrupted by our rebellion against him. And the intellectual reasons for evil don't often make us feel better when we encounter evil and pain. Because the problem of evil is not intellectual, the intellectual reasons for evil, the intellectual defense of the Christian worldview that includes the existence of evil, doesn't tend to be persuasive sometimes, because the problem is not an intellectual problem. The problem of evil is that it hurts. Evil makes us feel pain. And so when we're offered the valid and correct explanation of how evil exists in the Christian worldview, 
it doesn't take away the pain. And so it feels like that problem is still a problem. But as C.S. Lewis summed up, the only thing that makes it make sense is the biblical worldview. Intellectually speaking, evil is a problem for atheism. Emotionally speaking, it's a problem for all of us. So if there are valid intellectual defenses of the Christian worldview in regards to the existence of evil, why is it this problem keeps getting thrown up as if it defends atheism or as if it defeats Christianity? Well, what the problem often means is something other than what it's presenting. Sometimes it's just arrogance. The person presenting this is saying, well, if I were God, I would do this, or I wouldn't do that, or I wouldn't allow this. It's putting themselves in the place of God. Secondly, it's just ignorance. Well, I don't understand why God would do this or wouldn't do that. So they're taking their ignorance of what they don't understand and using that to put themselves in the place to judge and condemn God. Third, there is the judgmental self-righteousness. In terms of my sin, well, I'm only human, so God ought to understand when I do these things. He should just look at me and say, well, boys will be boys. But what those people do, that's intolerable. God should punish those sinners, but not me for my sin or people I love for their sin. He should punish people that I don't like for the sins I don't like. And number four, as I said, it's an emotional problem, not an intellectual one. We embrace our pain over our faith. We ask, where was God? Instead of embracing the fact that God is good and that he is sovereign and that he knows that good can come from the bad that we do, we instead just embrace our pain and say, this hurts so bad that God can't be there. But the answer to all of this is Jesus. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Mm -hmm.